time limit. Uh, as is well known for many years now, the EU has had its own sanctioning regime against third states by its own regime. I wish to distinguish between the action of a punitive nature which the EU takes to implement UN Security Council measures and the measures which it takes on its own volition. The latter are also known as autonomous sanctions. The legal basis is Article 29 of the Treaty on European Union in conjunction with Article 215 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the EU. The reading of these two provisions leads to three important observations. First, sanctions are meant to be a tool promoting the EU policies and goals in the context of the common foreign and security policy. They may, they may be employed to address and respond to different threats, for example, terrorism, cyber attacks, chemical weapons, and other weapons of mass destruction. But they can also be very specific, for example, targeting those responsible for Turkey's unauthorized drilling activities in the Eastern Mediterranean. Presently, sanctions, or to use the EU parlance, restrictive measures have been ordered against some 35 third countries. The second observation is that the European Parliament is not at least directly involved in these proceedings. The third observation is that the relevant instruments ordering sanctions, namely regulations and decisions, must embed legal safeguards for those affected including the right to seek judicial review before the Court of Justice of the European Union. This, I call it general sanctioning regime, has also been applied against third countries for the violation of human rights. Belarus, Burundi, China, Iran, Libya, Myanmar, Syria, and Venezuela are among others the countries targeted. However, in December 2020, the Council finally decided to overhaul this sanctioning regime and create a separate self-standing framework for taking targeted restrictive measures addressing serious human rights violations in any country of the world. This new regime, effectively a horizontal foreign policy tool for human rights abuses, necessitated the adoption of two legislative instruments, namely Regulation 2020-1998 and Decision 2020-1999. It has been called the EU Global Human Rights Sanctions Regime, and this is the focus of my paper today. It is important to note that the target of this new sanctioning regime are not countries per se, third countries per se. On the contrary, there are those natural persons and entities that the European Union regards as being responsible for serious human rights violations and abuses committed in any third country. And I would like to point out that we are talking about serious human rights violations, not any human rights violation. Such persons need not even reside in the third country where the violations were perpetrated. It follows that under the new sanctioning regime, the nationality of the violator, the country where the abuses took place, and the country where the violator is located or domiciled have been disassociated from each other. Moreover, the new regime does not replace the existing EU sanctioning regimes targeting third countries specifically for human rights abuses. Therefore, if both the state per se, and I'm talking about the state apparatus, and specific individuals and entities are to be targeted for the same human rights abuses, henceforth, at least as I understand it, there will be two separate sets of legal instruments ordering sanctions. The first set will concern the state, and the other will concern those individuals and entities held responsible. The latter set of uh, instruments will be adopted under the recent global human rights sanctions regime. 
And I'm saying that because uh, it, that this is my understanding because the very recent uh, March 21st of 2021 sanctions against Myanmar were not under the global human rights sanctions regime, but they followed the older general sanctioning regime. Anyway, uh, the new regime allows the taking of a range of restrictive measures. Uh, they can be categorized as follows. The first category, uh, category are orders freezing funds of those persons held responsible. The second category concerns the prohibition to make these funds available to targeted persons. The third category are orders freezing the funds of those who are held to be associated with the originally targeted persons. This new sanctioning regime has been dubbed the EU's Magnitsky Act, echoing the Sergei Magnitsky Rule of Law Accountability Act, which was passed in 2012 by the US Congress. The act was named after the Russian tax advisor who was arrested in 2008, died in police custody the following year in Moscow, having previously alleged that Russian officials had been involved in large scale theft of the state coffers. The term serious human rights violations and abuses is very broadly defined in Article 2 of Regulation 2020-1998 and extends from genocide and crimes against humanity to trafficking in human beings and gender-based violence to arbitrary arrests and violations of freedoms of assembly, association, opinion and expression. The text of this regulation does not explain what the drafters meant exactly by crimes against humanity, by sexual uh, violence, and so on. Equally, they offer no explication of the content of the various fundamental freedoms. Arguably, to have offered detailed def definitions would have been an onerous task. So what the uh, regulation 2020-1998 does is to make reference to two sources of law. The first is customary international law. And of course, different states may interpret differently what custom international law is. And the second are certain, as it's called in the regulation, widely accepted instruments of international law. And these include the European Convention on Human Rights. Pursuant to Regulation 2020-1998, the order sanctions will target all funds belonging to natural or legal persons which are listed in Annex 1. The funds shall be frozen and will be prohibited to make them available for the benefit of, su of such natural persons or entities. As regards the application of this new sanctioning regime, Ratione Materie, it extends to the whole of the EU territory, including its airspace and all aircrafts and vessels registered in any member state. As regards Ratione Persone, it covers any individual who is a national of a member state, any legal person incorporated under the law of a member state, and any legal person in respect of any business which was transacted in whole or in part within the EU. That it was transacted only part in the EU uh, means, in my opinion, that clearly the new sanctioning regime has extraterritorial application. 